One of the things that has always struck me about Hanalee's work, uh, since I've known Hanalee for the last six years, almost from the point I set foot in Johannesburg, is that uh, it reminds me of Eliza Doolittle saying to Professor Higgins, you know, words, 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 I'm sick of words. Because when I look at all of this work, there's something about Hanley's work that is beyond words, and I have the unenviable task of speaking about her work for seven minutes. So I start now, without hesitation, repetition, and so on. See, for me, Hanley is primarily an artist of the city. When I think of Hanley's work, I think of Johannesburg, and I think of the layers of history here, the layers of the migration of people, the layers of exploitation, the layers of despondency, the layers of hope that make up the city that we all live in and love. And when I first came to Joburg and I moved across that bridge, Nelson Mandela Bridge, into that abandoned part of the city, where the city decided to relocate itself to Santon shortly after apartheid ended. And there's that uh, wonderful uh, sculpture by Kentridge and Marx of uh, the Firewalker. And there's something about that, that told me something about the city that it was all fragmented, but you had to look at it a certain way. You had to look at it a certain way in order to understand how everything came together. And that's what Hanalee's work, earlier work, reminds me of, that she dwells in the mosaic. We commissioned a mosaic work for my Center for Indian Studies in Africa. It's probably the only work that Hanalee has done in color, in mosaic. And one of the things there is that the mosaic is made up of detritus. It's made up of things abandoned in mines. It's made up of those deep shafts sunk a kilometer into the ground, out of which Hanalee makes these sections. And you know this wonderful work of the eye looking upward, which reminds you of Gunwell, which is in Artson, Maine. And so it is both detritus of the city, it's the history of the city, the history of mining. Johannesburg is not a city without its mining. But at the same time, it's something about the recovery of that city, the recovery of the horror of the city to create something called art. So there is that fragmentation, there is the revisioning that Hanalee does, and then there is the reconstitution of the city as she holds the city in the space of her art. So if you're trying to make a distinction between form and content and all these tired old arguments that you make, her form is her content. Right? And there is a way in which what she does is what the city becomes. And if you think about the way she does her work scoring on walls, her grandfather in the old post office, her grandmother in, uh, in Fordsburg, the two, uh, one the mosaic, the other the scoring on the wall. You might say she's obsessed with her family, but then we'll let that be, she's a friend of mine. <laughs> so you know, there is a way in which uh, she, uh, it's not narcissism. I mean, it's not like Hanali writ large on the city, where the city becomes Hanali and Hanali becomes the city. But it's also about the space of the city, because I have tracked Hanali all the way from the cradle of humankind where Johannesburg was before she was Johannesburg, to Arts on Main, to now where she is, one Elop, at the corner of Elop and Wemmer Jubilee, where there's a new studio where Hanali has produced this work that you see before you. And Hanley, for me, is like that sign of hope in the city, right? where I track her and I can see the city growing behind her. Right? It's like following a firefly in the forest. So when you look at all of this work, and I'll come back to this, for me, Johannesburg is Hanley. Hanley is the artist of the city. When I think about Johannesburg, I think Hanley. Right? And it's not only because she's one of my oldest friends in the city. The second thing I want to think about is all of these, what you see as found objects. Now, this is a discourse in art, right? You find an object, you found you know, the uh, art of found object. But there is something about Hanley's work where there is an object that's found, and then she recovers it for herself. It is a found object, and it's an object that you find, right? So when you look at all of these abandoned doors, the detritus of the city again, the detritus of a racial landscape, the door there that says for non-European females, a toilet door on the back of which you have artwork done. And at the same time, there is Hanalee present in this, right? So it's a kind of, she does the Hitchcockian thing. She's present in her art. So that's a competition for you to find how many times Hanalee appears on these works of art. So if you think about the work that she did in Sweden, where she uh, did this wonderful piece, uh, wonderful installation in the forest of uh, a bow, 
where there were logs of wood cut, and there's this magnificent tall uh, installation of a bow made with circles, very much like the mosaics that you have in Arts and Maine. There is something about that relation between the boar and the forest. The boar is regarded as an invasive species in the forest, and yet the boar is a denizen of that forest. It is the human that is the invasive species. So it's thinking about that kind of balance, which Hanley doesn't spend too many words on. You look at her art and you see that there is something deep and profound in it. Or you think about the dragonfly that she did recently in Marox, right? where it is about that invasive species Johannesburg is obsessed with the idea of the invasive species because when you think about all the trees, the 10 million trees or so, the legendary 10 million trees, larger than the number of people in Johannesburg which are over Joburg, they were all planted in the late 19th and the early 20th century. There were no trees in Joburg. So when you have the black wattle wood, which is seen as an invasive species, once that species is tamed, then you have the dragonfly entering. And so when she makes a dragonfly in my rocks, which you should all go and see, which I've seen only in net, and I've imagined through a conversation with Hanley, there is a way in which, again, the idea of the dragonfly that comes back taints the idea of invasiveness in a city that is governed by the idea of xenophobia, right? of people who come from outside who do not belong here. And again, Hanley reminds us, through her art, not through writing tracts, not through writing books, but through an image, she summons up this question for us, which is fundamental to our very <coughs> existence. That racial landscape which has vanished, but resurfaces again in the idea of the stranger, the foreigner. Who is foreign? What is foreign? Finally, the question of history in the last one minute, since I'm a historian, right? and I have to reserve only one minute for history, which is rather tragic, but then that's time. So if you think about the hidden histories, all of this that you see before you is the history of what we don't see in Johannesburg. One is the history of the water. We open the tap in our houses, and out comes water and we drink it. We don't drink it filtered like in the rest of the global south. We drink it straight from the tap, but that story is going to end very soon. There is a history of the chemicals from mining, there is a history of sewage, but water is something that we take for granted. We also take for granted the fact that there are these springs all over Johannesburg, <coughs> which have a life. There are people who live alongside the waterways of Johannesburg, about which we know little. For most people, Johannesburg is about fear. It's about the city, it's about crime, it's about the fear of the stranger mugging you in a dark corner. And there is a way in which when you look at all of these, these breaks that run behind people's properties, where there is relationships that's built up between the people who are homeless and the people who occupy the property beside the water. And Hanley again thinks about the symbiosis that's at the heart of Johannesburg that keeps Johannesburg going. But Johannesburg is a city of hope, of relationships, and not of fear. So when you think about what amends, it is to be, uh, I mean, my Afrikaans, as you can see, is horrible. <laughs> so what amends, or whatever you say, right? So, so, yeah, so, uh, so when you think about that, you're thinking about these whole sets of relationships that are hidden from us, but which are part of the history of Johannesburg. So I think I have 30 seconds, so I'll end with some ancient wisdom. Ancient wisdom being in the Mahabharata, which is an ancient epic from India, and I've been from India to talk about ancient, that's right, 5,000 years of civilization and so on, to remind you how young you guys are. So there is this uh, passage where the five brothers are exiled, they go to the forest, and they're wandering around in search of water. Because water is what keeps people alive, what keeps cities alive, what keeps civilizations alive. And as they wander through the forest, they're tired, they come upon a water body and they bend down to drink and a spirit, a spirit, this pun, a spirit arises out of the bad pun. <laughs> so a spirit arises out of the water and says, you have to answer my question before you can drink from this water. And the four brothers are impatient, hasty and thirsty. So they drink and they fall down dead. But the eldest brother, who, re who is a repository of all wisdom, he says, I'll answer your question. And he, he says, it's ignorance. Ignorance is the greatest sin. And in one sense, what Hanley reminds us through her art is our deep ignorance about our city. 
where we live in fear, we fear the stranger, but it is a city that has the history of people who have always come in from elsewhere, like us. So I'll stop there. Thank you. <laughs>